Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I've got another tutorial for you guys and today's tutorial is going to be on scene transitions. This is a tutorial that has been long awaited from some of you so without further ado let's jump straight into it. So all this scene is is just a simple set of cubes which we can run and jump on. Uh, a few of these tutorials have been made like for example the animation tutorial is from this very uh, project. So if you want to go ahead and check those videos out go ahead and subscribe to the channel and look at the other videos we've got on it. So all this thing does is when you walk into this box it takes you to a brand new scene and it's very boring there is no transition in the middle and it just overall looks really unprofessional so that is what we're going to change today. So the first thing that we're going to want to do we're going to go ahead and create an empty game object and we're just going to call this scene transitions and from the scene transitions we're going to go ahead and go UI and we're going to create a canvas now if we press F on this canvas it is this big box up here so before we carry on go to the canvas scale art script and change your constant pixel size to scale with screen size this means if the screen was to change any size depending on different dimensions of uh, monitors or whatever the transition will scale with that box Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to UI and create an image. We're just going to call this a uh, black box. And we're going to change the color to black. And then we're going to go up to this little square up here on the rect, to rect transform on your inspector. Go ahead and press Alt and hold down Alt, sorry, and then press this little bomb right. And it will just stretch the black box to the four little arrows on each corner of the screen. We're then going to add a component. We're going to call this, well, we're not going to call it, we're going to add the canvas group. And this is just when we're, when for when we are animating and we don't want the once the transition is finished we don't want this canvas to be interactable and we don't want it to block any ray cast either. So what I'm going to do I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit more so this just prevents any weird glitches or any lines if you're transitioning and there's a, perhaps it needs to load a sec it will give that just an extra little bit of time to load. Now what we're going to do we are going to go to our animation tab and you can see you're going to select this black box and we're going to create an animation we're going to call it scene transition and we're going to start with end first if you don't have this animation tab go to the window at the top go to animation and just press the animation tab or alternatively just press ctrl 6 now that we've got this black box go ahead and press the record button down here go to your one second mark all the way at the end we're going to grab it and we're just going to drag it down just like that and now you can see when our transition ends it's just going to go like that and when it gets to the one second mark we we want to disable this and disable that next we're going to create the scene transition start go ahead and drag your black, bo black box even up here right to the top then hit the recall button go to your one second mark again and we're going to just drag this into the middle and you can see it now slowly goes down and this is what's going to happen when we first enter the scene. Now that we've got our two animations, go to your project, your animations tab or whatever these two scene transition animations are. And we're going to just turn off loop time for both of them because we don't want them to loop, we only want them both to happen once. Now once you've created these two animations it will create a controller and mine is called black box because that is the name of the image. Whatever the name of your image is will be the name of your controller. Go ahead and open this up and it will bring a new tab up called animator at the top for me but it might be somewhere else depending on the layout of your unity screen. And you can see it just has a few basic uh, little objects here and this is just how you control transitions and where we want them to be triggered and stuff like that. So you can see from our entry point it goes to scene transition end and that is what we want. We're going to make a transition from end to start and then we're going to create a trigger for this so when we're in code we can assign where we want the trigger to be so then we can choose when we want this transition to start and end so go ahead to this little arrow up here well not this arrow this little plus sign and just add a trigger and we're just going to call this trigger start with a capital s if you're following this tutorial exactly like me make sure you uh, call it just exactly that then we're going to hit this little arrow that is the transition in between end and start and we're going to add a condition and that condition is going to be the start right here. While we're on this transition we are going to turn off exit time and we're going to set the duration to zero because we want the transition between them to be completely seamless. And that is pretty much all of the animation uh, for animator and stuff we have to do. Now we're just going to go ahead and head over to our code. So in my code all I have is just a 
little load scene so what it does when the player collides with this object it just loads scene 2 that's simply all this script is if you want to copy this go ahead and do that make sure you have the uh, this directive at the top it's using unity engine dot scene management that is how we manage scenes and control uh, different scene loading and stuff like that what we're going to do we're going to declare a new public variable and it is going to be the animator and we're just going to call this scene transition the syntax that we are going to be using is called a coroutine and if you've watched some of my previous videos you'll know that we do like coroutines on this channel they are super helpful and they are performative efficient as well so what the the syntax for this is ie numerator this one down here and we're just going to call it load level just like that open this up with curly brackets and what we're going to start off with is the we're going to drag our scene transitions and we're going to do dot set trigger and our trigger that we named was start with capital S so all this means is that basically when we call this function it is going to firstly call the transition so it's going to play our scene transition we are then going to wait for yield return at new wait for seconds and we're just going to wait for one second so the yield return new is basically what you use in coroutines to if you're doing a number of different functions we're going to hold up so we're going to use yield return new wait for seconds to wait for one second and then it will carry on playing the rest of the things that we want to call and the final one that we want to do is scene manager dot load scene and we're just going to call scene 2 so now we can get rid of this in our on collision enter and we're going to use the syntax start coroutine and the name of our coroutine is load level so start coroutine is basically we are calling this set of functions now if we head back to unity and we go to our script you can see we've got scene transition animator and we're going to drag our black box animator onto there because that is what we have here we have our animator right here now if we go ahead and press play on this you can see our animation for the start plays and then when we hit this button you can see our transition plays very very nicely and you can do this over and over and over and it's quite simply a very easy way of making scene transitions like I said this is highly customizable and you can make this to any of your transitions that you want to make because it is so easy to do so on that note guys I'll thank you very much for watching if you've got any other tutorials or videos you want to see me make go ahead and drop them in the comments I'm going to be doing a The Last of Us 2 review soon uh, I've also done a PS5 reveal analysis so if you haven't watched that feel free to go and head to it on my channel but apart from that, I'll thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.